This second example, I'm going to do things a little bit different. In example one, I wrote down everything and then calculated the individual momentums. This one, I'm going to use the formula in this case, and you'll see it'll be a little bit less algebra and a little bit less writing, but it requires you to be more organized with your information and really understanding which numbers go where in this case. So with this example, we have a single stationary railway car is bumped by a six car train moving at 9.5 kilometers an hour. The seven cars move off after the collision. Assuming all the masses are the same, what is the speed of the seven car after impact? What makes this tricky is they don't give you mass. But I have a single car train stationary. So the first thing is, is the mass of object two is the single car, which I'm going to define as x kilograms. Its velocity is stationary, so it's zero meters per second. It's bumped by a six car train, all of them same mass, so it'll be six times bigger, six x kilograms, and its velocity is 9.5 kilometers an hour. Now here's the neat thing. Normally you would change in most questions kilometers an hour to meters per second, but with momentum, as long as you have the same units on both sides, and I just noticed I didn't put the right units in the second one, kilometers per hour, you keep kilometers per hour consistent throughout, you don't have to convert in this case. Six car train, all the cars are the same, so the relationship is that first six car train should have six times the mass. After, the combined mass will be seven times, because six plus x will give you seven x kilograms. And what we want to know is what is the velocity of these objects after. So you can go work out the initial momentum before for each object, the momentum after, then plug it into the formula. But I'm going to show you a little faster way. Total momentum before equals total momentum after. You always write that formula. And now what we're going to do is go to what the formula for momentum is and put in all our values, then solve for our unknown. So let's do that on the next slide. So the momentum before is the momentum of object 1, which is m1 v1, plus mass 2 velocity 2 equals the combined mass times the combined velocity after. Now when you go back to this question, Object 2 had a velocity of 0, so its momentum will be 0. So we can cross this out, and what we're looking for is the combined velocity after. So the mass of object 1 times the speed of object 1 divided by the mass combined is going to tell us what the velocity is of the combined mass is after. You can see you'll get very quickly lost with this manipulation if you don't know what each one of those variables represent. That's why you choose a notation that helps you stay organized. Oh, mass of object one, velocity of object one. And that's why you write that down in the before and after diagram so that when you go get the numbers, you put them in the right spot. So I've got a 6x which was the mass of object 1 times the velocity of object 1 which was 9.5 kilometers per hour divided by the combined mass 7x kilograms equals the combined mass velocity after. 
Now you might have been wondering what is going to happen to that x, but now that you see this in the actual substitution, you can see that your units of kilograms divide out. You can see that your x's divide out, and it's basically 6 times 9.5 divided by 7 to give us a combined velocity of 8.1 to the appropriate significant digits kilometers per hour. Doesn't ask for a direction in this case because it's only asking for speed. So we're looking at the combined mass. Notice it's a little bit slower, which should make sense. We had only six cars moving at 9.5 kilometers per hour. When it hits that seventh car, it's going to slow down a little bit because it has to get that seventh car up to speed. Where does it balance out again? They all travel at 8.1 kilometers per hour.